Coming up today on That LTD Life, are you still looking for an alternative to Google Analytics? I know that Google Analytics 4 came out and it burned a lot of bridges for people, but I've got good news for you. Site Behavior is here. This is a lifetime deal on AppSumo. Starts at just 49 bucks. That is the plan I'm using to record this video. I'll get into all of the plans and pricing kind of as we go, but let's just check it out because I've been using this tool and I think it's pretty interesting. So I just put it on my website a little while ago so you can see there's only 11 visitors here. This is called the dashboard and I didn't have to do anything to configure this. I literally just added the tracking code and I get all of this useful information. So we get duration of visitors to the site, the bounce rate, how many pages they visit, um, whether they interact with certain fields. We've got the range of clicks and you know what? I don't know what this is, but don't worry. There is little tool tips here. So a range of clicks is when a visitor clicks on part of the website more than three times within one second, it's considered as a rage click. Oh, I misread it, rage click. So no rage clicks, that's good. That means that people are not misinterpreting fields as something that they can click on. We've got our views over time here, uh, a map of where people are coming from, the top countries, sources that have referred people, what browsers they're using, what on the site is being clicked. We also have the devices being used and then an overall user navigational map. So step one, here's where they entered the website. Step two, here's what they did next. And step three, you know, they might've dropped off at this point or even on step two. So really cool kind of left to right flow of the overall funnel of your website. I don't know about you, but this is more actionable information than I have gotten out of Google Analytics for like ever. And I didn't have to do anything to earn it. So let's kind of back up. Let me show you how you get a site set up with user behavior. So you just go over into the workspace right here and then you add a website, just enter the URL in. So I'll do daveswift.com and then you can choose whether or not you want complete tracking. Now I have this on because it lets you find out what people do in the future. Let's say someone lands on your page once and then they go away, but maybe a few days later they come back and they do something else on the site. You can kind of get a little you know, overall view of what they're doing on the site over time. So I like that and I'll show you more about it a little bit later on here. So go ahead and add that site in. And then what it does is essentially you open this up, you get a tracking code here, just copy this, paste it into your site and you're good to go. By the way, if you decide you wanna change your mind on that advanced tracking or complete tracking as they call it, it's just over here under tracking. You can toggle that switch to turn it on. And you might also consider blocking your own browser so that you're not actually getting data from yourself because that's gonna kind of corrupt the data that you're trying to gather. Okay, so you can see here, this is my workspace and I've got two sites inside of my workspace. There's no limits on the number of sites you add to your workspace, but each LTD account gets one workspace and then it's gonna be billed based on how many site visitors you have. So you can see here on the plans and pricing, I'm on tier one, which means you get 20,000 total site visitors per month for a one-time purchase of 49 bucks. If you need more site visitors, just go up to the next highest tier. You can go as high as 1 million visitors per month for just 600 bucks. So I think that's uh, pretty reasonable. They're gonna talk a little bit more about how this works and doesn't work for agencies in a moment but first let me show you some more of the cool features. So we saw the dashboard over here. The next option below it is called boards and these are kind of like custom dashboards. So I've got one that I created here. You can see what it looks like. I just added one widget to it. So I can give this a name. I can uh, move this widget around. I think I have to be in some kind of edit mode here. We'll go edit. And now I can move this widget around. I can add additional widgets. Really, I can track any metric that I want. So this is great, especially if you've got people you're reporting to and you wanna show them the progress of the website. You can add in only the metrics that are important to you and maybe not get distracted with other things that are on the main dashboard. So to do this, we need to create a chart. So charts go on the board. That's kind of the overall workflow. So I'll create a chart here. You can do different chart types. Uh, we can do a count, we can do a series over time, we can do funnels. So like we saw before, how people entered the site and then eventually dropped off. You could create a customized funnel to see which people go from specific pages to the next if you wanted to showcase that. Uh, I'll just go under time series here and let's go ahead and create uh, some criteria. So I'll go under filter and then you can choose any of these parameters here. So let's say you wanted to find people that uh, visited from a particular landing page and then you just choose your exact URL or a URL that contains some type of query. So I'll do exact URL and notice when I click on it, 
it actually realizes which pages people have already visited. So that's really nice. I can choose maybe my most popular pages here. So I'm gonna choose that LTD life as the landing page and I'll hit apply right there. And now essentially I've got my chart ready to go. I could say that LTD life category visits over time and I can enter in a description here if I like. I'll create this chart and then it's over here on the left. So I just need to add it to my board. So I'll just hit add to board and then I can get my little chart here to see how many people have visited that page over time. Now, if I wanted to move this chart around, I can just click on those little handlebars and put it wherever I like. It's kind of up and down. The width of the board is not infinite as it kind of appears to be. So I can move it lower or higher, but you know, it's gonna keep things kind of concise. Uh, you can't put it like way down in the corner here. All right, so let's update this board and we can move on to the next section here. The next section actually is charts. So we could make our charts right here and just view that specific chart. So here's page views for a, a particular page of the website. And you can see uh, you know, how many have visited, how many different users there were, and how that has changed over the last time period. So I'm filtering here by 30 days. I could do 24 hours. I haven't had the, the code on my site that long, so uh, it's gonna be the same information for all of these filters. The next option is replays, and this is really cool. So we can see all of the visitors on the website and the exact actions that they took. So this person right here looks like they landed on the homepage and then they went to the That LTD Life category. They were referred to it from YouTube. They're on the, the site for about 37 seconds and they're from Indonesia. They were on a mobile phone using the Chrome browser. Well, let's watch exactly what they did. So I hit play here and they're scrolling down the page. Looks like they're uh, gonna go all the way to the very bottom. Seeing all of our services. Not interested in those. And then eventually they see that LTD life in the footer. And they're waiting. This is an eight minute visit and they eventually click on it and proceed to do something else. Maybe just leave the tab open. But over here to the right, I can see how many times they clicked, how many times they rage clicked. Uh, I do like that term. Uh, if they entered any forms, any custom events they might have taken, and then an overall timeline of what they actually did. Now, what's even cooler is that this contact, even though I don't know their name, now has a unique identifier. So if in the future, I wanna find out what this visitor does, I'll be able to do so. And that is right down here under visitors. So I managed to find that exact same visitor. If I click on them here under visitors, I can see how many visits they've had, what URLs they've been to, maybe what referred them in terms of UTM parameters, what country they're from, and then I can have each individual session that they've had, I can click replay and watch it again. Now we get unlimited session replays. There's no sort of cap here in terms of storage space or anything, unlimited session replays with every single tier. All right, so this is the visitor section and you can just kind of scroll through and, and see what people are, you know, you're getting an individual data point here, which is less useful in most cases because you don't typically make decisions based on the actions of one person. You wanna make decisions based on the actions of the masses. But if you do wanna see what the fringe cases are, what is tripping some people up, you'll be able to do that here under the individual visitors section. Now, where it's more helpful, again, is probably in those replays to see exactly what they did. But we can also see heat maps, which are going to be collections of places where people clicked on the page, as well as scrolling. So you can see how far down they scrolled on the page. Now, there is a problem with demonstrating this on the video in that it does not work if you're using Shopify or Cloudflare. I happen to be a Cloudflare user, and so I'm not gonna be able to show you the, cloud, the heat maps, but they are working on a fix for this, so I hope they get it out soon. But essentially, here is the interface, right? So I could scroll through the page and I would see you know, those different color markings to indicate where people have clicked throughout the page, but it's just blank as it is right now. You could choose between clicks and scrolling down here. You could also sort between desktop and phone devices down there. And you don't have to just do it on the homepage. It works on every page of your website. So once again, it automatically populates with the pages that have already been visited. So if I wanna check out the services page, I can do that. One thing you'll notice with heat maps is they take a long time to load. It's very, very slow to get that up, but it's you know aggregating all that data and trying to draw it together into an image. So that makes sense, but it is a little bit frustrating. 
All right, the next tab down is called feedback. And this is really interesting. It's kind of outside of analytics, but it's very helpful for CRO or just learning more about how you can improve the user experience for your customers. So here is my website, and this is currently being tracked. Notice there's a little feedback tab over here. And as I scroll down, it kind of stays on the page. If I click this, I get a little widget that pops open. Now I've already filled this out, so let me do it in a private window. All right, so here is the feedback widget. If I click on this, I can rate my experience on a scale of one to five. And let's say I just choose four, and then I can leave a little message. I'll say, this is a demo and send the feedback. And that's all there is. You don't collect any contact information. It's literally just a way for people to report bugs on your website. So back over in site behavior, we've got the feedback section over here. If I reload this, I will see that there is going to be a second rating. There it is. It took two reloads, but it did show up rather quickly. So you can see this is a demo. This is the, the marking that I just made. And uh, I can see it was made on a desktop app and the time that it was recorded. So I like the feedback tool. I think this is really cool. And it's also something you can easily turn off. You just go under your site settings under feedback right here, choose enable widget. You do have to turn it on. It's off by default. The only issue I have with it is it would be very nice if they allowed you to turn this on maybe for specific pages, but it, there's no way to do that. It's just on or off everywhere. The tracking code is going to fire. This will fire as well. And I don't really want it on the home page. I'd like it to be more on things like online course pages or maybe blog posts. But uh, yeah, I don't really want it on like the main sales pages. I mean, I guess it could be useful to report bugs, but it's also an extra design element and it might not work with your website. All right, so we already saw the visitors section. The events is very interesting as well. We can see individual events that are happening on the website. Uh, and you don't have to do any setup for this. I, it's my favorite part of the tool that you can track clicks, you can track all of these events without having to do any sort of configuration uh, in terms of monitoring for specific you know, IDs or, or things like that. So I can see which pages have been clicked on, I can see form fills, things like that, um, and what devices they're coming from, country of origin. Again, this is very similar to the visitors where it's just bulk data, right? We're not necessarily making decisions based on this, but this is the data we can use inside of our charts and then display them on our boards. Over under integrations, not a lot going on here. There's no integrations yet. They are working on a pipe drive integration. So it says coming soon, but uh, nothing else on the horizon. So that definitely a little bit disappointing, but you know, it, it's all right. It's standalone. You don't really need to integrate with anything specifically. I know some people would probably like another reporting dashboard to output data to something like a, you know, a Looker Studio or something like that. But you know, they're trying to be different than Google, not integrate with Google. All right, so let's get down to some more of the specifics here. How does this all work? So I mentioned before, you get a workspace, you put the sites inside of the workspace. It's one workspace per AppSumo plan. So unfortunately, that means when you add teammates, they're gonna have access to all of the sites on your plan. Now I will mention, we get unlimited teammates. It says unlimited team members, but remember, they're gonna be able to see all of the other websites data. So. If you have a client, you want to add them to your workspace because you're maybe tracking their website for them. Well, they'll be able to see all of the other websites, just not a real professional look. Now, I will say that when you add a user, you can set a role. So you can set like a member or admin as the different type of user. But unfortunately, you can't assign them to a specific website. I think it'd be very easy for them to add in another dropdown here to say, all right, choose the workspace and now choose the sites they have access to. They don't wanna do that probably for monetary reasons. It would make maybe the site a little bit too friendly to agencies and it would take a lot more resources. However, I do think a lot of people would really enjoy that. A far less elegant but still viable alternative would be to make the main dashboard public and just allow you to create a share link so you could send it off to a client or maybe make each individual board have a public link that you could share with a client so they could at least see the data but they're not necessarily doing anything very heavy in terms of load on their servers. I think that would probably suit most people, but I know others are gonna to wanna to be able to pass protect the pages and it just gets into a lot of nuance there. Overall, I think they're doing it right in terms of the billing. So they're letting us have unlimited websites and unlimited team members, but the limits they do put are on things like number of charts, number of heat maps, number of funnels. They keep the data for six years, which is a pretty long time. And we get that feedback widget. Now, everything else is based on site views. so unlimited sites, limited number of views. I like that because then it's actually charging you based on how much you're taxing their servers. If you're hitting their site a million times per month, 
you're obviously gonna cost them a lot more money than if you have 10,000 sites that each get one visit. All right, so it's almost time for my final score. Before we do that, I wanna ask you if you would please click the like button or consider leaving me a comment down below for the algorithm. Really, it helps the reach of this channel. Thank you so much to everybody who's helping the channel grow. I greatly appreciate it. All right, so on to my final score. I'm gonna give this one a seven, eight. I like this tool a lot. I definitely would consider using this over something like Google Analytics. Sure, there are a lot of open source analytics tools out there, and there's also some affordable monthly services that have gotten pretty popular over the last year and a half or so, but I don't think any of them have been quite this easy to get as much actionable data out of, and then also include things like you know the recordings and the heat map. So really just an incredible offer here. Trust me, you could host something like Matomo, but by the time you pay for the server and do things like heat maps and all those add-ons, those are not free. You're gonna be spending a lot more than 600 bucks, especially not a one-off fee. It's gonna be probably hundreds of dollars per month. Multiply that out over a year and you know, you'll know you be wishing you had a lifetime deal. Like yeah, Matomo is free if you host on your own server, but look at all the extensions, like you want heat maps and session recordings, that's 259 bucks a year. A-B testing, forms, analytics, and then you gotta configure it all. Trust me, it's not free. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do wanna pick up this tool or anything else over at AppSumo, consider clicking on my link in the description. That earns me a small commission and is what makes it possible for me to do these daily LTD reviews. All right, head over to clientamp.com, get signed up for the free email newsletter, check out the show notes for this video, and I'll see you in the next review.